Welcome to So What's It Actually About? I'm your host, Margie McKechnie, and I, along with my wide array of guests, hope to help you better understand and weather the wonderful world of actuarial science. Hello, and welcome to today's episode. Um, I'm joined by Steve, who is the head of actuarial science and mathematical statistics at WITS. And it's such an honor to have him here. So thank you for joining us, Steve. It's a pleasure, Morgan. It's nice to see you. It's <laughs> nice to see you in a role reversal. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so we are going to be talking about actuarial science quite holistically today. Um, and I think my first question to you, Steve, would be, how would you define an actuary? So this is one of the most difficult questions to answer because when you try to tell someone what an actuary is, you've got to start off from what they know and tell yeah. them how what they know leads them into the world of actuarial science. Or what so, they know is wrong. <laughs> very often. So what I tell people is that uh, an actuary is a business professional. Yeah. Uh, and that usually shocks them. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it shocked me when I was in first year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a, he's a business or she's a business professional who uses mathematical and statistical skills to solve problems. Yeah. Uh, and these problems have uncertainty attached to them and have value attached to them. Yeah. And, and the actuary is the person that in some way acts as an interface between a real world and a modeled mathematical world mm. and then uses that information to make decisions and to design solutions. And and the actuary effectively therefore has to be a good communicator. She has to be able to interface between people who know they have problems um, and people who can model problems and be that bridge that allows people to get solutions for problems that they have. Now, it could be at an individual level if you're designing individual project products in mm-hmm. life insurance or health insurance or something like that, but it also is at a business level because businesses have the same risks, same challenges, and same value consequences as individuals do, and actuaries are that, um, that professional that brings um, some type of solution to uh, enhance structure. Yeah. And I think, okay, given that explanation, what sort of person would then be best suited to an act- to becoming an actuary or studying actuarial science? Do you think there's like specific traits that you should have to be an actuary or do you think it's mainly proficiencies that you need? So I think it's a combination of the two. Yeah. So to start off, I think that one of the big things that you need to have if you want to be an actuary you've got to be comfortable being uncomfortable in an unstructured problem space. Yeah. Some people are really good at solving problems that are sequential, where they can actually have a checklist to say, this is what I have to do, and they can work through it. Yeah. Whereas with an actuary, you've got to impose that structure on the question. So you've got to be uncomfortable in an unstructured problem-solving space. Yeah. Um, you've also got to have good mathematical skill. So you're not a mathematician, but you've got to be able to use mathematics in the same way that someone who writes a novel uses English. Yeah. Um, or whatever language they write. Humanity. Yeah. So mathematics is one of the languages of actuarial science, and you've got to be really proficient in mathematics. But don't think that being very proficient in a language, which is mathematics, yeah. means that you'll be an actuary. Same as being very proficient in English, won't lead to you being a novelist. You've got to want so, to be a storyteller. Yeah. And so it is, is that as an actuary, you've got to want to solve problems. And you've got to be comfortable not knowing where you are and saying that I will rely on my thinking skills and my tool chest to be able to solve this problem and move it forward. Mm. So great mathematical skills, mm-hmm. okay? Um, comfort in being uncomfortable. Mm. Um You've also got to have communication skills because yes. you see that you're that bridge. You're this bridge between a real world and a modeled world, which is never reality, but yep. it enables you to make decisions in reality. Yeah. Okay, so you've got to be able to communicate. So we need good language skills. Yeah. And then amazingly, you need resilience and perseverance. Yeah. Because the actual journey is one of the toughest journeys that you can go on. And down. Absolutely. And if you can't... Um, handle the knocks in life and get up and carry on. If you don't have mm-hmm. that ability and drive to get through, um, it's very difficult to get to the end and become an actuary. Yeah. So I've taught a very large number of people over the years. Yes. And what separates those that are successful 
from those that aren't is, is not necessarily brilliance, but it's drive and determination. Sure. Uh, albeit we're working with a group of people that are in their own rights already successful, already bright, yeah. at the top of their class. In order to even get in the, into the, the first year class. But the brightest student is not necessarily guaranteed to qualify. And the least bright student could well become an actuary because they've got the drive and the determination, given that, of course, we're in a class of, of high achievers. We're really looking at the top 0.1% of matric leavers. Sure, sure. And you, you, as we were discussing before this, you've been in actuarial education for 58 years, which is amazing. And you've had obviously seen the profession change. And what would you say are some of the key changes that you have seen sort of filter through Obviously, the board exams have changed, et cetera, but the actual role of the actuary and how that's sort of expanded. I mean, you have like new disciplines now. How has that changed over your your experience? Yeah, so it's a, it's a very interesting question. So I, I think let's start off by saying that an actuary, by my definition, is someone who's completed all of the exams and is a fellow. Yeah. So I don't use the term actuary to describe people who get to the associate level okay. or to the technical level. Okay. Um. And effectively, actuaries are actuaries because they've gone on a journey and through a whole range of subjects and materials. And at the end of that, they are left with a very valuable approach to solving problems and a, a toolkit, if you like, of mm -hmm. techniques that they can apply. Now, historically, actuaries were probably the first people to use data and mathematics in a business context, if we go back 300 years. Sure. So they were statisticians, they were mathematicians, but they applied their trade to data that they collected around mortality, yeah. and an industry grew out of that. So if you like, actuaries were the first professionals to take technical, statistical, and business uh, and mathematical skills into the business world. Mm -hmm. And... For a very long period of time, the only industries in which actuaries worked were those industries that had large volumes of data mm -hmm. uh, and where actuaries could bring their techniques to bear. So we talked about insurance and mm -hmm. um, the retirement or pension space and health insurance and general insurance and then investments. Mm -hmm. And what has happened over the last 30 years has been amazing in the sense that we've moved into a world where everyone has data. Yes. And what that means is that the actuarial tool uh, set can be taken and applied in many more areas than it could in the past. Yes. Now, many of those areas don't by law require an actuary, whereas some of the other areas that we talked about, like life insurance, do. Mm -hmm. But that still doesn't make the person not an actuary. Yes. Because once you've got that tool set, you will be thinking and operating like an actuary mm -hmm. in that particular area. And what we've seen is that actuaries have moved into many more areas, and I anticipate they're going to be virtually everywhere in business in the same way that other business professionals have become you know, ubiquitous in, in uh, every particular uh, profession mm. or in every industry, such as every industry uses lawyers and every yeah. industry uses IT specialists. Yeah. Virtually every industry will use accountants. And so it will be that every business will see a need to use actuaries because they'll all be exposed to risk. They'll all have data. They'll all have customers, and they'll be able to bring their tool set to bear on those to help the business provide better solutions to clients and to make the business more resilient and to give value to shareholders. Mm -hmm. And it's not just in business that actuaries will bring these skills. They still already bring them into the public sector helping governments make decisions yeah. around the provision of education, health care, yeah. um, all the things that require us to understand how the population is evolving and changing and where it's going to be and need long-term planning and that need modeling and need um, decisions around investment now for future benefit. All of these are areas in which actuaries can play. Hmm. So I believe that actuaries are going to continue to evolve and to be involved in broader fields. And so we've seen, and it's been very obvious over the last 30 years, that we've added new disciplines, if you like, as the practice areas. Yes. But I think it's going to evolve beyond that. Hmm. Uh, and actuaries 
are going to be sought after for their skill set by every industry, yeah. uh, regardless of what they do. So I think, I mean, on that point, we've talked about how it's evolved in the past. What would be your view as to how it is evolving? I mean, you're saying like we could play in different spaces, but obviously we live in a, in a space now where we have AI and chat EPT, et cetera. And I remember when I, I worked at a school for the past two years, some of my students were interested in studying actuarial science and they were like, but will actuaries exist in 10 years? You know, won't just AI take over? Um, and I remember laughing and saying, okay, you don't understand what, what an actuary does. But what would, how would you sort of frame an answer to that question? So predicting the future is very difficult. <laughs> that. But um, the same thing was said about actuaries when calculators were invented. The same That's thing funny. was said about actuaries when computers uh, and uh, first of all mainframes and then PCs became ubiquitous. Mm. Um, and the reality is that these are tools. Um, and it will allow us to do more things, but the actual will be the person that interprets and analyzes and understands what's happening. Um, even as artificial intelligence becomes um, more and more useful, mm. the creative element and the understanding of humans will probably still be driven by humans. Or at least we hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, there are going to be very few occupations uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that are we'll living like the Matrix. Or so, so I don't see, uh, and perhaps it's um, as because I'm not an expert in artificial intelligence mm. or statistical machine learning, uh, which is really what drives it. But I don't see that the actuary's role will disappear. I see, excitingly, that the actuary will be playing in more spaces. And we'll be able to do things faster and have more information uh, for, on, on which to operate and, and, and think and, and make decisions mm. and run businesses. Mm. So, so I'm optimistic that um, the actual profession is, is one of those that will benefit from the introduction of more powerful tools rather than compromise. Mm. I think another, another question I would have there, again, sort of harping back to, to thinking about a matric, if they, were, if they asked you, why should I become an actuary? So let's say they're highly numerate. They have the skill set that, that sort of indicates that they could get into actuarial science, but they're considering other options as well. Why would you say choose actuarial as a route going forward? So at the end of the day, I don't like to help people make the decision. I like to help them have the information that they need to make the decision. Yeah. So when I speak, and I speak to a lot of matric students, I speak to a lot of grade 11s, um, when, when I do the various workshops and talks that, that I hold for those students, what I try to get them to understand is what an actuary does. Yeah. Um, because most people have no concept what it is. It's just a, a, a name on a piece of paper. Yeah. If you ask them what does a doctor do, they have a much better idea because they've almost all certainly been to a doctor. Yeah, engaged with a doctor, now. exactly. Um, you don't go to an actuary. <laughs> you don't go to an actuary other than by chance. Yeah, um, exactly. So what what I try to get them to understand is, is what an actuary will do and what are the, the uh, traits, if you like, that a successful actuary needs. Now, I believe that there's a job for every personality type, but at the core actuaries have to be comfortable working with ambiguity. Yeah. And there are some people who are absolutely brilliant mathematically, but they are much better at a linear type of mathematics. And they might be better in other branches of the mathematical science. Yeah. And in that case, I say to the people, what you should do is you should design a first-year curriculum that enables you to keep as many options open as possible because you won't really know if you like something unless you try it. It's, yeah. it's a bit like the idea of swimming. Mm -hmm. You might look at a swimming pool and you've never been in a swimming pool and it looks wonderful and the water sparkles <laughs> uh, and you think this looks like the best thing on earth mm -hmm. and you get in and you discover you don't like being surrounded by water. Yeah. Okay. So what I try to get people to understand is that they're never going to know if they like something necessarily until they try it yeah but if there are certain things that they don't like 